Hey gang, I'm Carl Cheney and this is episode 31 of the CBD Source Podcast. Happy Hemp Day. You're listening to the CBD Source Podcast, your source for all things CBD. Coming up on the show, when I mentioned last week that our next several episodes would have big guests, I was not lying. This episode, we're going on the road. Chef Ryan and I traveled down to the W Hotel in Hoboken, New Jersey to interview Anthony Sully Sullivan, who you might know from the OxyClean commercials. (laughs) He's the ultimate pitchman, who you might remember was even on a show called The Pitchman back in 2009 with his then now deceased partner, Billy Mays. While filming a different reality show, he met his current business partner, Dave Christian, and together they formed a hemp farm called Mount Cush. For the last four months, they've had a dedicated film crew following them around as they grew this hemp farm from nothing. This is an insane story. You're going to love this. So make sure to stick around for the entire episode. And you'll quickly learn these guys aren't getting into the CBD business just to make a quick buck. This is a passion project for Anthony. And uh, I'm going to let him explain it. So gang, let's dive right into it. Let's give a warm CBD Source podcast welcome to Dave Christian and Anthony Sully Sullivan. Gang, you're listening to the CBD Source Podcast. When you guys contacted me, I was amazed by your story. Um, I couldn't think of a better person to be getting into the CBD space than the pitch man, Anthony Sullivan. I mean, like we're trying to find good advocates for CBD who can talk about it and actually have not just trying to profit or make some kind of jump into a space that's growing rapidly, but like you have a genuine reason for getting into this CBD world. Yeah, every day that goes by, I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Um, I was, I gotta be honest, when I, when I decided to jump into this with Dave, I was, uh, there was, I was concerned about it because there's so much misinformation around CBD and, and, um, and I, you know, I thought that, you know, not only was I getting into this for the right reason, but I, in the back of my mind, I was thinking maybe I could kind of, um, answer some of those unanswered questions. I don't like to use the word mainstream, but maybe help the general public understand what CBD can do and maybe use some of my, you know, just some of my marketing prowess, if mm. you will, and also my personal experience to to just share my story. I like that. We, we call it like CBD mystifying or CBD bunking, all those myths, you know, like there's so much stigma just because it's a cannabinoid and it's, right, you know, cannabis. Right. And for so many years, it's been looming over, uh, you know, just this, the, the veil of, legality legality and now that everything's kind of open it's all opening up people are jumping in so fast and there's a lot of shitty products on the market for sure products that aren't really doing what they claim or like the labels are messy and you know it's it's good to have people that are actual like real players in the game that are coming in you already know how to sell products you already know what a good product is how to test it how to make sure it's quality before you bring it to market. It's a complete departure from anything I've ever done before. Uh, if, if you know me, which yeah. you, you know, you kind of mentioned, mm-hmm. you know me from OxyClean, you, you know me from <laughs> right. selling steam mops, um, exactly. all of a sudden I've jumped into CBD. So it's uh, it's been a really, really interesting year. So I'm excited that you're jumping into the space. Yeah, well, I'll give you a little backstory. It wasn't, I didn't actually kind of jump in. I, I really thought about it carefully. What basically happened was um, just over a year ago, my, my daughter, Devon, she's t- she turns nine in a few days and um, she had some seizures and she was born with a rare genetic disorder. And she's had lots and lots of health issues throughout her, her short little life. She's a great kid, super present, um, loves everybody, but she's had lots of medical issues. And um, um, she got put on the anti-seizure medication and that medication was prescribed to her by a neurologist. And I didn't even really think twice about it because you, you, know, you go to the doctor and whatever the doctor says you should take, you take. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. pharmaceuticals. And then there's a, there's a place for all of these medications. I really believe that. But um, anyway, so she started to take this, this anti-seizure medication. And then over the a period of about two to three months, she lost 20% of her body weight. But the, th- the thing that really got me was her, I, I noticed this dramatic shift in her personality. And she's really, really vibrant, present little girl. She doesn't talk like uh, like we would talk to each other, but she communicates really well, word assimilations. 
And I took her on a rafting trip down Wikiwachi Springs. And I was, uh, there was a group of us, you know, together with my daughter and she just had this, all of a sudden I did not recognize my little girl, her personality, the personality that I knew was completely gone. And anyway, it was, it was a really, um, as a parent and any parent with a kid, you, you hate to see your, your kids suffer. Yeah. It's, you know, it's bad enough on the short term, but this, this, all of a sudden I saw this vibrant little personality ripped from my, my little girl. And I, I, I was sure it was linked to the medication. Anyway, so I, I called up a mom and I, you know, suggested, I said, look, we need to look at some, some alternatives. Like mm -hmm. this, this medication is literally. What was the medication? Keppra. Uh huh. She was on Keppra. Um, uh, you know, I want to be careful when I just, I don't want to label Keppra as a, as a, as a bad pharmaceutical, right. but obviously it was having a very, very, the side effects of that particular drug for my little girl were, were, were really, really intense and negative. And, um, so I reached out to her mom and her mom was the one who suggested, she says, well, you know, how about we go down the cannabis road? How about we go down the CBD road? Mm -hmm. And my initial reaction was as a, you know, misinformed person was, like, I don't know if I want my little girl to be baked. I don't, you know, I just, I, that was my knee jerk right. reaction. But anyway, you know, it took me about uh, over and I slept on it and I thought anything is better than what we're using right now. So we contacted mm -hmm. the neurologist and the neuro neurologist Long story short, didn't want to to take her off 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 the pharmaceutical, right. but we eventually prevailed as her parents. We had the right to 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 knock back the dosage, and it took quite a long time to get her off it. What dose was she was she on initially? Well, I can't remember uh, uh, the the Capra, but it was it was strong. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, and then we started experimenting with with CBD, and um, and it was uh, you know I was I was excited for the, the fact that there was a, a plant based alternative, you know, uh, to to this this pharmaceutical. I have, a, I have a kind of a personal story from my own life. And it, this is why your story resonated with me. I hope I don't fucking cry on camera. That's mm -hmm. right. Like, I've done plenty of crying. So like, yeah. Like um, 11 days before we launched this podcast, we launched it on 420. My girlfriend had a stroke, a pretty bad one. And uh, like her whole left side. And then when she was in the hospital uh, for that, <laughs> uh, they found out she had cancer too. And it was like two big things. Jeez. And uh, so She's been, she gone, she went through chemo now, lost all her hair and everything. Um, and I haven't mentioned this on the air yet, but like in July, she had a seizure, a grand mal seizure. And like, if she was on CBD, that might not have happened, but we didn't, she wasn't on, on that because she also had blood clots in her lung. So like she had been on blood thinner. So I couldn't, I have all the CBD in the world with this podcast and I couldn't give her any. Cause like there's certain things that like CBD will block, you know, like if you're on blood thinners and things like that. Uh, it'll fuck it up a little bit. Mm. So um, all this time, couldn't give her CBD. She had these seizures and now she's on Keppra. And like, when I saw that, when I saw that Daily Mail article about you and I was like, oh, she's like a zombie. You know, your daughter was like a zombie. Like ever since she started the Keppra, she's been a little bit, you know, I don't, it, I don't know if it's that or not, but she's been sort of like not totally herself. Uh, and I can't wait until like she's off these blood thinners and can start using CBD. Cause it's like, I know what's at the end of this tunnel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, and I saw when I read that and your daughter like changed and, and like completely flipped it. It's like, Oh my God, I'll get my girlfriend back. You know what I mean? It's really, mm -hmm. it's really was a positive thing for me. I'm like, I've got to meet this guy. I want to talk about it. Same, same story. Yeah. Same story you have. And I, I hear you getting choked up. It's hard to watch. Well, I, my daughter's story, I remember like, I've, I've got to the point now when I can talk about it without tearing up, okay. but I got to a point I couldn't talk about it because she literally, I remember being on a, one of those two, two seater little kayaks going down Wikiwachi Springs and I could not calm her down. And I, I literally was like, I do not know my daughter. Wow. She was, uh, uh, her skin tone was gone. She lost 20%. She's a pretty small kid, you know, 20% mm -hmm. of her body weight. I mean, Dave loses 20%. Yeah. He looked fine. But, <laughs> but, my, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but she, um, and I, I remember ha having a conversation with her, all, everyone who, she has an army of people. And I said, I am willing to quit my job and, and do nothing and buy a small little house and be there for her every time. I would rather her not be on Kepra. And, and and catch her every time she she right. had an episode, right. um, um, then then watch her suffer under this medication. I still listen. There's a there's a place for for these pharmaceuticals. I really do, and I I don't want everyone just to go. Oh, I'm gonna right. Um, and it's a it's a pow some of these anti seizure medications are, are very powerful, and and it's not something I would ever wean anyone off lightly. But my personal experience with with my daughter is um, has been fantastic, and. 
Can I put it all down to CBD? I, you know, I, I don't know. I'd have the study, the studies would have to be was done. Was it a but British neuro- neurologist that helped you with it? No, like, no, it was, uh, it was in the US, it was in Florida. Okay. And um, technically um, she's still on it. The doctor wouldn't, um, wouldn't, unwrite the prescription no because i think uh, the doctor was afraid of liability which i also understand too but i feel like we do live in this society now where the you know the 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 answer is take some more pills take some more pills how can we throw medicine on this yeah and i look i still think you know diet and exercise nutrition you know like work life balance but um you know i always i think with what i know now is like at least explore the options that are available to you before you just go in and start you know pounding pharmaceuticals for this at least try see what works for you You can always change it one of the things i always felt with devon was it doesn't have to be permanent we'll try this and if it doesn't work we'll try something else and we'll keep trying things until we find we'll try everything we we possibly can and um and so far so good and i (laughs) i wanted that you know that was she was my inspiration to do this um and about the same time and i don't know why if, if there's some you know, the greater force at work here. I found myself standing in the middle of a hemp field up in uh, Heinsberg in Vermont. Uh-huh. And I, I, I just went up there with a buddy of mine and, um, and he invited me up and um, I wasn't really paying that much attention. I thought I'd just go for a, you know, field trip up to right. Vermont. So I find myself standing in the middle of this uh, 25 acre hemp field, about 35,000 plants. And I remember like it clearly something happened to me in the middle of this field. I just right. stood there and as far as I could see, there was just these plants and it, it all kind of came together. I'm like, these are the plants that's making the CBD that my little girl has taken. And I, I just stopped and I paused and I, you know, I love what I do, love selling OxyClean, love the, the whole ad scene and TV business. And I thought, you know what, this is, I want to, I want to do this. I want to, I want to, I, I didn't want to just do it. I wanted to farm it. I'm like, right, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to learn how to farm this. Right. And that's when I, uh, I, I quickly realized that there was no way um, I could do this on my own. I've never farmed anything outside of some tomatoes in my backyard and mm-hmm. some broccoli and a couple of pumpkins. And that's where uh, that's where I brought Dave in, and I uh, I said, did a little bit of research, and I'm like, I called Dave up, and uh, and I'm like, Dave, I, I I got something I want you to come and see. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, not sure why he called me. I have no farming experience. Well, this is why I let you jump in, but you know, you can maybe explain um, because I I I'm our partnership has been fantastic. Our, our true north is to is to do something meaningful for for my daughter and also help other kids and people mm-hmm. around the world and and push out the the benefits of this product. But then. Uh, I brought Dave into the loop and uh, all of a sudden we find ourselves on a, on a farm and you can jump in. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Sully and I met about uh, most must be 17 years ago. Now we, um, we met through um, an adventure race called the eco challenge, which is um, they're just being revi- uh, revitalized. Now it'll be coming out on Amazon in 2020, hmm. um, which is an expedition race. So about 300 miles and, you bicycle and you you hike and climb and navigate the whole thing together. And so we were teammates. Is it a reality show or something? It, it was filmed for USA Networks back in the you know the or the early two thousands. Um, but it started out as it is a reality show. It was one of Mark Burnett's first reality oh, okay. shows. So from this, you know, the, the guys that were on the same TV crews that were on Survivor and Borneo, the first episode of uh, Survivor came over to the other side of Borneo and filmed the first episode of Eco Challenge. Nice, and so. Nonetheless, I'd done two of them and Sully had seen uh, my team, you know, uh, flail along the course in last <laughs> place uh, and was inspired to uh, to to attempt the Eco Challenge on his own. And so he reached out and we we got connected and, and did a couple of uh, of these expedition races together and became fast friends uh, lost in the jungles of uh, a variety of different uh, lo- locations across the world. But um Nonetheless, so, uh, we, we stayed friends uh, for years after that, the race. And uh, from time to time, he would call me up with uh, a business idea that he was that he thought we'd like to look into. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, four or five times I said, no, this is you know, it's not for me, Sully. Good luck. But <laughs> this particular time he called me and said uh, he sh- sent me a text of him standing in a hemp field. And uh, if you've ever seen, uh, you know, you'll, you'll never see a farmer happier than the day before they start to harvest. So he was standing with his farmer and he and the farmer were ear to ear beaming (laughs) as happy as can be in a field of cannabis as far as you could see. It's just something magical about being in a giant open field of of cannabis. And so 
he invited me up to take a look at it. Uh, the next weekend we went up and I, uh, he asked me to talk him out of it. And I, uh, <laughs> I had the same feeling as he did. I just thought this was something historic, um, to see an outdoor grow of cannabis that was legal, uh, as far as we could see. And, you know, I knew his his uh, struggles that he was having with his daughter. And, you know, he, he told me about um, how the CBD was helping him. And for, um, here on the East Coast, CBD over the last year has become very well known. But, you know, last year it was sort of still a couple letters that people didn't know much mm-hmm. about. So it's really emerging now as oh, yeah. uh, as a massive movement. And and so nonetheless, we uh, I told him I'd look into it and. uh over that that winter, this last winter, I I when I saw what they were doing um, in terms of growing, I thought it was amazing. But what I saw what they were doing in terms of drying, I thought it was a disaster. They were really struggling to to dry the plant quickly. It's hmm. a d- dense flower, and they had spread it out over a Home Depot sized building all along the floor. And every day they were bringing in new fresh trees into the same room that was, you know, had been drying for 14 days. And I said, this is just messed up. You know, they're going to, this is, they're going to have a lot of mold in this building. Right, so, right. so I, I, uh, I come from, uh, I've done several, um, entrepreneurial, uh, efforts in my day, uh, had four different companies that I've had some, some success with. And so I was familiar with the startup business, but, um, my most recent business was a uh, commercial drying business where like a serve pro type business. Perfect fit though. Yeah. Where, uh, <laughs> you know, I would chase storms and, uh, you know, if a hurricane came through, I would see the hurricane come in a week out and, you know, they get everyone so worked up that the hurricanes come in mm-hmm. and everyone goes and clears out the stores. Well, they try to vacate and I would start driving in, you know, I would take my crews of guys and all my gear and start driving towards the hurricane because as soon as it pa- the weather passed, you know, roof would be ripped off of a hotel like this. And, you know, 16 floors would be flooded oh, and I would yeah. go in and tear out, tear out the uh, wet materials and control the environment and dry out the building. So when I saw what they were doing with their hemp in Vermont last year, I said, you know, this is I can definitely do this part better mm-hmm. than what they're doing. Um, but, you know, I have no idea about the farming. We're going to have to find somebody to talk to about right. how we're going to how we're going to get these plants in the yeah, ground. It was a strange call because, uh, you know, obviously I've got a fairly big Rolodex of people that I know. But I, I, I was looking for someone if they got their teeth into it. And my, I think my question to Dave was, um, listen, I need you to come up to Vermont and I want you to talk me out of doing this because I'm <laughs> doing this. And I think he knew right away that there's no way. Right. You can do this on your own. Like you need someone to, to help you. And, and Dave, Dave jumped right in and he, you know, when he, what he brought to our operation from a drawing perspective was fantastic. And then, um, we, we leaned on a, a couple guys up in Vermont and, um, there was some, there was some parameters that we wanted for our land. But one of the things that was really, really important to me, if I was going to, get on board and, and become part of this business. I didn't want to just, and it would have been easy. This would, the easiest thing to do would be to go to a manufacturer, white label it, right. put my name on it and, right. and put my CBD on the shelf and it'll be on the shelf already. Right. It would already be out there. And I'd be one of a thousand people, celebrities, people who are just doing <laughs> it just for the money. I, I, and especially with my background in say, you know, as seen on TV products, I think that would be the logical thing that people would expect me to do. And I, I thought, you know what, because of my the heart space here, because of the reason I'm doing this, I don't want to do that. I want to actually farm it. And there's this whole romantic idea, oh, I'm going to start a farm. Um, it was a it was a big departure from my comfort zone. I'm like, yeah. you know what, if I, if we're gonna if we're gonna develop our own brand, I want to buy a piece of land. Uh, we'll figure it out together. We'll figure out the soil. We'll figure out the water. We'll figure out um, you know, the 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 privacy we wanted the proximity to the local resources and we went at it from the ground up and i thought if if we're going to do this i want to understand everything from buying the seeds uh figuring out how to plant them the the water wheels laying the plastic get or, getting an organic certification there was something about doing this expedition style yeah. and kind of leaving my old life behind for a little bit oh, that's so great. yeah we we both uh um pretty much moved up to vermont from what well, april Right. Oh, you, you yep. haven't been back. Well, uh, yeah. This is the first time back in civilization. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen him in, in a, I mean, look at him. He's all cleaned up. Yeah, we, um, suit. we when we started our, our, our land search, not long after our first trip up, we, we realized right, the first thing we wanted to do was find a piece of land. 
So we started looking for farms and farm really good farmland is actually not that easy to come by because the farmers that have good farmland, when they, you know, want to pass it on to the, the next generation or, or a neighbor typically will come and buy their land or, you know, so it's, it's through word of mouth that the best right. fan, the farmland uh, actually changes hands. So, you know, can't go on Zillow and just buy, you know, the best farm you can find, right? It's just not there. Um, so we started touring the state, looking at different pieces of property. And, and again, we made a list of like a checklist of what we liked about the first farm that we saw. And it was privacy, security, a water source that um, was actively being farmed. You know, some of these things we had on our hit list mm -hmm. and it was difficult to find a piece of property. But we stumbled upon a piece in Plainfield, Vermont, um, without a structure on it. There was no farmhouse, but the land itself was picturesque and it was uh, actively being farmed by a couple of local uh, organic dairy farmers for feed. And um, what were they growing? Just something they to were, feed. They, they were, were growing sorghum and, and hay. And mm -hmm. we, we literally rolled up on the lads that were farming it. And, uh, you know, they had a, 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 a New Holland tractor and a shotgun in the back. And we just roll up <laughs> in his truck and they kind of looked at us sideways. And I don't think they wanted us. You know, we didn't even call the realtor, but we found this little piece of property. I may say little, it was 116 acres. It was on the side of a mountain. Um, and it had pretty much everything except a water source and a structure. It was the right price. We, we liked everything about it. So um, we had a, a, someone come up and, and kind of figure out where, if we could get water. And the well driller said, we will hit water. Uh -huh. It just, it might, it might be at 60 feet or 600 feet. Says, it is down there. Someone gets some, as seen on TV, dowsing rods. No, we there. did. We did. The guy came <laughs> they, out. They with, had with the dowsing rods. Great. But it the was funny crazy. thing is, Dave and I actually picked where we wanted to put the well. And that was kind of our, my first little sign. We, we've, I think we've had our angels looking over, over us this year because we've, we've had some, some episodes that we should not have been able to go through, but um, they came up with the water witching sticks and uh -huh. they found it and they dug it and we hit water at 60 feet. That's great. And yep. Dave called me, it was still still snow on the ground. And that was the first sign like, right, we got water. We had about 200 gallons a minute at one point. We did, it was it was crazy amount of water. Uh, we did it in the snow. Um, again, we thought we would have, we didn't know if we were gonna have to drill for, you know, a thousand feet or, or a hundred feet, but we were at the top of the mountain. We just thought this was the spot to put it because it was centrally located on the farm and at the top. And if we had to pump, we could pump downhill. Right. So if we had to drill a little water further- runs down easier. Water, yeah, we pop these resistance. are the things we knew. Yeah, these are some of the skills we brought with us uh -huh. to this whole operation. But the, uh, the, 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 the funny thing was we, there was no structures on the farm. We, you know, we kind of made this requisition list of things that we thought we needed. Like we know we, know we need greenhouses. We know mm. we need a couple of RVs. We need a couple generators. We're gonna need some trays. We're gonna need some dirt. Right. We're gonna need, you know- and Somewhere to sleep maybe. We, yeah, we, well, we got up there. <laughs> Let me tell you, this spring, and we picked the wettest winter, I think, in recorded wettest spring in recorded history to to start. And the mm. locals in the village, Plainfield, that they would drive by, and I could just see them from their cars shaking their heads like these <laughs> these yahoos are right, never right. going to make it. Uh -huh. um, and I think that's city just kinda, slickers, yeah, kind of sure. strengthened our resolve a little bit. And you know, we got stuck in. We got a couple local guys to help us. We brought up our grower from Philadelphia. We uh, got a couple local guys from Vermont just to kind of say, listen, we're, we're doing this. And there was a couple of times when I thought everyone was going to quit. I thought they, these guys are going to quit. But in the back of my mind, I think with Dave, like, listen, we're doing this for the right reason. You know, he's, he's leaving his family temporarily. I'm kind of putting my production company over here to, to do this. And we, we, we're on the expedition and yeah. we're going to make it to the top and it's going to suck, <laughs> you know, and, and it's just a blizzard. We'll get through it. The weather will, you know, the, the weather will subside. And, um, and it was a it was a hell of a year, but I think the, one of the things that I'm really excited about is in all this. Um, I had a TV show ten years ago on Discovery Channel called Pitchman. Pitch Men. Yeah, I remember Pitchman? Yep. Yeah, Billy Mays. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Mays here. Um, yeah, we can't leave here without talking about that. In sure, no bit. problem at all. Be happy we'll to. We'll double back to that. Yeah, but I um I still had a lot of my relationships with um, the guys from Pitchman, and and Tom Beers was the creator of of Pitchman. Mm -hmm. Um. He did the voiceover too, right? Yep, he did the voiceover. And of course, Deadliest Catch and Ice Road Truckers. So I, I said to Dave, I said, we have to film this. Like whether we succeed or fail, we have to at least like film this. So, yeah, he said that to me the first time I came up, actually, we 
when we walked into that Home Depot sized building and it was just, you know, uh, if you've ever witnessed uh, an outdoor grow hemp harvest, it is a sight to behold. It's like mayhem. We uh, haven't been to one yet. Well, we'd love to host oh, you. You'd have to come up next, totally next fall. Come, yeah, you yeah. guys have to check it out. It's just crazy. It's beautiful and crazy and chaos all at the same time. And it lasts for at least a month. For us, it was about a month, maybe six weeks. But um, when we were witnessing it last year, you know, we were like, this is absolute insanity. It's just crazy. <laughs> um, this is made for television, like the just the drama, the chaos, the high stakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was like, this is, you know, we, we got to film it. And so I was actually initially pretty reluctant. I was like, buddy. This is going to be hard enough as it is. Like this is a hard. Like this is a. Right. You're, this is a tall. Yeah, more order. reason to film it. This yeah, right. A, this is a tall. The whole order. crew like babysitting yeah. them as yeah. they slog. Oh the well, minutes. it was to start with. We didn't have a big budget for the film crew, so I just called one of my old friends in LA, and I'm just like, bring a camera and, and bring a <laughs> microphone, and we'll just start filming, right? Mm -hmm. And and I mean, it was. Uh, I I don't know how much footage we got of the early days, but I mean, it was brutal. The only right. thing that would have made it worse is if we were getting shot at. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, the possibility was there. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, it you're, was, not, you're not wrong about that. It was just, um, but as you know, once we, I think that there was a couple breakthrough moments. I remember once we started seeding, once the greenhouse, the first greenhouse was up and we actually had a structure with some shelter and we got our trays and we filled them up with the dirt and we seeded. That was when I knew we were off to the races because the whole entire crop came in in the size of four soda cans. You know, it, was, it right. was the strangest thing going out and spending 60, 70 grand on these four soda cans right. on these little tiny seeds. Oh. And, and then they were just sitting in the back of Dave's truck. I'm like, don't get arrested. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. And, you know, I think I, I was worried. Um, I'll be completely candid. I was worried how, um, you know, people I work with in my everyday life would would respond to me, you know, leaving my kind of relatively safe world, if you will, of being the OxyClean guy. Right. And all of a sudden jumping into this space, which is very, very misunderstood, sure. you know, into the CBD world. And and I wanted to educate myself really quickly about wellness, not 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 stoners and the below 0.3% right. THC. And so I kind of went on the crash course of education. But I think- one of the things I'm really happy with, and it's it's nice to sit here in the in the hotel of New York City <laughs> in the background. I, I think what it's done is for the two of us, I don't think there are many people who have struggled through the actual farming process. They just white labeled it, go buy some right. isolate, put it in a product, put your name on it, and hope for the best. Um even I, even actual farmers. I mean, most of the farmers that that I'm I've met in Vermont. They have a structure. They have a farmhouse. They have, you know, a generational greenhouse that's been built. You know, for us, it was every single thing we needed. Starting from just a patch of dirt, pretty oh, much. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we had a couple guys in Vermont that helped us out. And I'm so grateful Neighbors. for everything. They, 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 you know, and they told us, this is the track. You need a 70 horsepower tractor and you need a tiller, the, the bush hog or whatever it is. And then <laughs> we quickly find out that, that the property grows rocks. We pulled out rocks the size of small cars. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, that's how big that um, you know but luckily our neighbor lloyd uh, the shout out to our neighbor lloyd who he's got some heavy construction equipment he would come up and help us but um we we uh, learned so much by doing it when I mean, we laid 55 miles of drip irrigation we dug our own well uh, we fertigated we, we dug a two million uh, gallon retention pond wow we put in our, our own structures we ripped we put new roads in um we were we were grossly undergunned when it came to equipment um, you know, we thought we had enough equipment and neither of us could even have driven a tractor before. I mean, it mm -hmm. took us, the tractor got delivered to our neighbor's house and we go over to pick it up. It took us about four hours to uh, figure out how to, how to, how to even drive. Move it. We don't want to ask you, how do you, how do you drive the tractor? Cause it's so embarrassing. Does it take keys? Uh, no, it's, 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 it's got it. To, the, the shift is on the, on the gears. Anyway, it's all, once you figure it out, like anything, right? once you figure it out, but I think doing it the hard way. And uh, has has given us an appreciation for the plant, an appreciation for the process, and um, I'm really excited uh, for where we're going next with with what we you know the genetics that we've done and how we how we've taken it out of the ground and, um, and the products know, that we're making. I think I think we were prepared. I like to think, you know, we're that, not prepared. He's this is he's off. He's no, off you were prepared for the harvest, buddy. You you prepared. You you. Were, I don't think we were prepared so much for some of the things that hit us. But one thing I know now, I can say we were prepared for the harvest. You were, you were not going to let us fail at the harvest. We built this epic drying system 
that I think might be the biggest on the Eastern seaboard that he, he developed. I give him of a lot course, of credit because yeah. he's from the, you know, evacuation and uh, of relative humidity and positive pressure and hydroscopic <laughs> content. Of, and uh, he knows uh, that back he, and forth. Well, I, I got it down now as well. Now I'm an expert in drawing. <laughs> he knows it's, some it's of the been, words. Uh -huh. It's been a, it's been a great, um, uh, yeah, and I think even in the even in our darkest moments when, you know, it was terrifying when we laid one row of plastic and looked at each other and like took about three hours. There's no way. <laughs> no way we're gonna get these in the ground. Right. And we're we gonna had need a couple we look but you know, a lot of it was just we had to go and get the right equipment. Right. And it's amazing when you know, if you need the right tools for the right job in this. And we we didn't know and I even think because hemp is relatively a relatively new plant. The 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 infrastructure and the the know how doesn't really exist. It's not like not in know, this country. No, it, it doesn't, doesn't exist. No. Got to go so, to China. To, yeah, for sure. Been growing it for like ten thousand. Yeah, years but we were able to get an organic certification, which we were really excited about. Um, and we've had a. Uh, I'm I'm still a little shell shocked. I'm still assimilating back to civilization. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll bet. Yeah. Uh, going back a little bit to when you first were standing in that hemp field. Like I was thinking about, it. that's like one of those moments of clarity that you have in your life. You know what I mean? Like you're standing there, like I've had a couple of them mm -hmm. just randomly where it's just like, wow, something you feel that, that like, this is something I have to do. Like, it's almost like a, a, a big choice moment where like my whole life can go a different path if I take this choice or I can just take the easy route. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the, it seems like you were, you were weighing your, uh, you know, you called him, you're like, come on, help me make this choice. And that little nudge got you in that, you know, to, to basically take your life in a totally new direction. Yeah, I, I think I honestly had an out of body experience. <laughs> I really did. And I, I, I hadn't drank anything and I hadn't smoked anything. <laughs> I was, you know, in, in a complete moment of serenity oh, and yeah. surprise, just sitting in the middle of this field and thinking about how beautiful it was and how peaceful and how I use the word magical a lot. And also in the back of my mind or front of my mind is this is, this is the plant that is providing the medicine that is benefiting my daughter. And I'm just like mm -hmm. that. And then I'm thinking, okay, I can sell this. Yeah. Like if I do this oh, yeah. right. And I am, I, I thought to myself, if I don't do this right, I'm never going to get taken seriously. That's true. It's just going to be like, oh, the OxyClean guy slaps his name on a bottle of CBD. You're putting your whole brand be. on the line. I was like, really? I, I, have to, I have to go all in yeah. and, and set sail solo, or not solo, two of us, and we have to summit, you know, together. But um, I think this is this is something that I really, really wanted to understand. And it's funny, I've been like doing some been. A lot of people have been asking me questions, and I, I think sometimes about the story of OxyClean. Like OxyClean, when it started out, no one knew what it was. It was mm -hmm. this white powder that you put down and make stains disappear. Right. And we went up against we went up against some of the biggest brands with OxyClean. Um, and Billy was the spokesperson, mm -hmm. and I was behind the scenes, you know, helping helping the, with the marketing, like producing it. And, and it stuff. sort of just reminded me of that same sort of energy when you're at a point when there's something that big is going to happen, and now you look at the size of OxyClean, right? It's almost a billion dollars in sales right. a year, but. Um, and it, you know, it's uh, it was the little stain remover at the time, twenty years ago, that no one really heard of, and it got a cult following, and now everyone knows about it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, uh, and I, I feel like what what I wanted to do with this is a very similar kind of journey. Um, but whenever I've really got behind something, I wanted to get my teeth into it and really understand it from the ground up. And that meant this year. I mean, I have to be honest. I have a nice house in Florida. I have a twenty-two thousand square foot. I right. got a boat. I have a. I have a nice. Sure. I'm. I did not need to go live in an airstream on top of a mountain. Exactly. Slogging through mud. But it was great. I got to tell you, I couldn't wait. I, I obviously was juggling two or three jobs this year, and I was Dave. I'm very fortunate, and thank you. I'll go on the record. Thank you for <laughs> for putting pleasure. in the time. Dave put in more hours on the farm than anyone. Um, but it was. I couldn't wait. When I was down in Florida working on my marketing and everything, I was, couldn't wait on weekends. And if I got a week off when I could, I was sure. up there. And uh, I loved, I mean, this is this will sound crazy. I love picking the rocks. I love the weed whacking. I could ride the water wheel all day long. I would, could spend all day planting <laughs> with my little finger. Um, there, was, there was something very therapeutic about it. And um, what's the old saying? There's uh, the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. I fell out of my comfort zone most of, and I, I still do. I still mm -hmm. feel like I'm learning. That I have not mastered this. This it's year one space. Yes, it's year year one. one. You know. So I'm, I. It's it's really exciting to be 
um, in it, in in the mix. And I feel like this was the year to go. Um, if we didn't, if we hadn't have gone this year, I, I think next year is going to be a, m- a much different landscape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's moving quickly. So I'm happy we, we pulled You got to get on that wave while it's cresting up and you're going to be there. Yeah. I, 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 I'm curious to see where the business goes. I, you know, I, listen, it's exploding. There's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of unknowns, but mm-hmm. in that there's a, there's a lot of excitement. So I think the way we did it, the timing was right. You said moment of clarity. I, I did. It's, I've used that expression a lot. I had a moment of clarity standing in the and middle. You know what I'm thinking too? Like when you're in that field and you're in you have all those terpenes, like wafting into your nose, right? Mm-hmm. You're, it's not just the view and the beauty of it, but you're getting all that aroma of the, of the terpenes, like actively. It's almost like the plants are talking to you in a way. Like, well, I've seen, sure. I've yeah. seen people. So obviously, you know, we have an Instagram page and we send pictures and we're, like every day you can't, you're texting pictures. Mm-hmm. And I've invited, we probably invited, maybe 50 people up to the farm this year not one of them all of them they we take them we had a tour that we'd start to do it was you know like the backstage you know, uh-huh. universal studios tour we'd start off at the greenhouses and then we go up the roads and we we drop people off that we call it camp kush at the top of the hill okay and there's normally about five minutes of complete silence <laughs> <laughs> the, whoever it was would uh-huh. stand up there and just say nothing and dave and i would just kind of wow. disappear yeah. and the next thing out of their mouth would be wow yeah, I did not see it like this. <laughs> it has it has an effect on people, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, even Tom, when Tom, we had Tom Beers come up, the ex- uh, executive producer of Deadliest Catch. He came up, and at that time, we had just had Sully's uh, Airstream was parked in the middle of Bronton, our largest field. All of our fields are named after towns in uh, in England that Sully's uh, from, from his hometown, but uh, our. His, his Airstream was parked in the center of our largest field and it was empty at the time. And I remember Tom turning to Sully and say, saying, uh, after just uh, like uh, five minutes of silence after his tour, he was like, this is ambitious. <laughs> 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 it was most definitely an ambitious project. And it's, it's hard to really re- convey the scale of it through a few photos, you know, and the same thing with that, like that original uh, hemp field that we walked into. The picture you know, it's impressive. You know, you see like these big giant cannabis plants, but being in that field, the, the, it's a magical feeling really to be, and it may be that what, like what you're saying, the terpenes and mm-hmm. just the, the sensory overload of the visual yeah. with the, you know, the aroma and everything all at the same time. And the beauty of it is like the first time you went there, that's the first time you're getting that all encompassing feeling. So like you could almost, it's almost like you saw what the future was going to be. You're like, I'm going to be in my own field Mm-hmm. smelling this, experiencing this. And then it's almost like high-fiving yourself through a magical, mm-hmm. like invisible portal, like high-fiving your future self. And now you're in your own field, like slapping back, being like, yeah, yeah, it happened. We, yeah, did, it. we I, did the hard work. It was, I've had people come up and Devin's mom came up in particular. It was a very, that was a really special day because uh, Devin came up to the farm. And That's I think great. even on our, our toughest day, you know, to have my daughter running around the fields and, you know, uh, her mom took her shoes off and is running around barefoot. That's like, awesome. Earthing. And, and having, you know, um, people, th- there's something magical about it. I'm not quite sure w- what it is. And I think we we have this be- we have this beautiful property on the side of a mountain. Um, we we named our brand Mont Kirsch. Mont was which is there's another almost serendipitous uh, thing that happened with the name. So actually, Dave kind of came up with the name Mont Kirsch. And Mont <laughs> is a shout out to Mountain, obviously French uh-huh. and Mountain and. Vermont, Green Mountain State, and Montpellier is only about five or six miles away from my farm. Makes sense. And Kush was, you know, I was a little, I'm like, oh, Kush is a little edgy, but <laughs> we'll, we'll go with it because, um, you know, n- no one is a great trademark. Anyway, we had a friend of ours come up who speaks fluent Hindi, and he's he's very excited about the name. Uh-huh. He said, this is the best name, the best name. And I am like, well, why is the name so good? He says, Kush in Hindi literally translates to happy. Oh, so nice. I'm like Happy Mountain, which we didn't know that going mm. into it. So, and, and our logo <laughs> is of Camel's Hump Mountain, which is a very iconic uh, mountain in the state of Vermont. So even the fact that we named Mont Kush it, it translates itself in, into to Happy Mountain. Cool. Yeah. Um, we actually just got a fish for our, we have a, a segment called the Cannabis Diet where we do uh, CBD cooking and we have a little beta fish and we call him Kush. Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't know that. Now he's yeah. like, yeah. he's happy, happy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's not K-U-S-H. I think it's K-U, it's phonetically, K, like, but yeah, phonetically the same, but yeah, Happy Mountain. But of mountain. course, That's you know, cool. the, the Hindu Kush mountains are where most of the genetics is, you know, originated from over in between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Hmm. And so- 
that's where most of the indica strain is has originated from and so when you see uh What's, what strains are you guys going to be growing there or have you grown so far? We're working on some. Of, we're, this year, we're partnering up. We would love to do our own genetics, to, to breed our own genetics, but obviously that's going to take a little time. But we, uh, we grew- We've looked at everything. Days. We grew Lifter, Hawaiian. Um, um, we've done the Oregon CBD you know, strains. Um, there's, we've looked at uh, about 20 different strains in the wild in Vermont. You know, uh, We've done, looked at Cherry Blossom, Cherry Wine, uh, Remedy, um, Stormy Daniels, Stormy Daniels, <laughs> Trump. Uh, now, did you know that Trump wasn't his name? Not as T R M P was, it, and then it got acronymed into Trump. It's now, and now I think Stormy it's just Daniels. T one, right? Got on some, I don't know what yeah. it is, but we. Uh, it was funny. We saw some some plants that were huge plants, but the flower wasn't. Every every genetic seemed to react. You know, you'd have a slight variance mm-hmm. in the in the flower or the size of the plant. But um, we had a 100% germination. We, wow. we seeded by hand. We used a water wheel. We used plastic. We irrigated and fertigated. Um, and we, we had a very, for first time rookies, we had very little plant loss. And, uh, it's true. Zero How many theft. acres did you, did you we see? We did about 51 acres registered uh, with the Agency of Agriculture as certified organic. And so about 75,000 plants. Um, wow. Which Good is uh, impressive uh, to see all in, you know, uh, throughout our nine meadows on our on our farm. But we're right now, um, we're in the same boat as, as every, all the rest of the hemp farmers in the country as we're waiting for, you know, guidance on the from the USDA and from uh, the Department of Agriculture on how they're going to come down on uh the CBD to the THC content in the seeds. Um, so we're all at the mercy of uh, the genetics that were sold. And, you know, I think some states are looking at, you know, ruling on 0.3% total THC mm-hmm. versus the Delta nine. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. Cause I think it's going to be very difficult for farmers out there to keep their plants below 0.3% total THC. Right. Um, Unless you isolate it, you know, which well, look, is not a way you don't really want to go. Like you, we agree. We looked at all the extraction methods and we're going down uh, a, a road that we think is going to really uh, solventless extraction. Um, and we're taking our time. Um, one of the reasons I want to take my time is I, the product that we want to bring to market. I want it to be the absolute best. Mm. If it was in the, the wine category, I want it to right. win it, you know, right out of the gate. Right. right. And start and, winning high times awards. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I Cold feel, I cannabis feel. Cannabis cups. I, That's right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not worried. I mean, it doesn't, but I do feel like the CBD is a lot more than the isolate. And yeah. the isolate is the go-to and it's the easy, it's the path of least resistance. But I do feel that there are a lot better ways to extract the CBD that I know you, you know about. And we're, we, we're, we've looked at all types of extraction and, um, we're excited about about developing some some products now, teaming up with with different people and uh, looking at pushing them some products out. We're super excited to go to MJ BizCon. Um, mm-hmm. That's coming up. And what uh, are you extracting it with? You said solvent solventless. We are we're looking at all the different extraction methods, but we are uh, in love with the solventless extraction. To to be honest, it's just uh, what we're trying to do now is scale it. It's very difficult to do solventless extraction at scale, but we think we can do it and we have time to do it. We actually purchased this summer. We realized that mid, mid heart or actually at about mid July that we did actually need a structure. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying to do all this. <laughs> off. 50 acres. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we actually, um, we actually were able to purchase a, an ice factory in the town of Plainfield. Believe it or not, the town of Plainfield, population 1,200, doesn't have that much. There's a there's a pizza joint called the Positive Pie, which, uh, <laughs> Carla, we love you. Thank you for feeding us this summer. There's a co-op. There's a gas station. There's a, a law office and a yoga studio and a, a grow shop and a couple of other things there. But there actually happened to be an ice factory that was for sale. So we we purchased a ten thousand square foot facility, nice. um, waterfront on the Winooski River, <laughs> and it so happens because it's an ice making factory, it also has frozen storage. So we were able to get our, our crop out of the ground um, after what we saw last year with the, some of the carnage that other farmers had experienced, and and the weather in Vermont is not like growing in California or or, uh, or Colorado when it's just the relative humidity is higher, right? right? So you can kind of let mother nature do its thing when it comes to drying. Yeah, We're not afforded that luxury up in Vermont and right. I think anywhere in the Northeast. So Dave's drying system that he engineered really, um, we, we over-engineered it. I'm glad we did, but we were able to get everything out of the ground swiftly. 
um, we it was almost like a military operation. All we needed is a couple of Hueys and uh, mm-hmm. guys running around in uniform mm-hmm. with, uh, and it would have looked like there we were know. taking over a small country. I just think how slick it'll be in two years too. You know, oh, like this is the first run. Yeah, we learned Everything's a lot. Hard. We learned a lot. Time. We've developed a couple of processes this year that we're really trying to preserve the terpenes, the uh, all the cannabinoids, over 100 cannabinoids in the plant, and we believe in the entourage effect. You know, yeah. and so. Um, you know, we have high CBG in our uh, in our genetics. We have, uh, you know, very low THC and uh, super high CBD. And so um, we wanted to try to preserve all those trichomes and all the terpenes as much as possible through all of our processing as much as you can with 75,000 plants all coming out of the ground at the same time. Right. And we believe that, you know, by preserving as much of that as possible, as much as what comes out of the ground as nature grow as it grows in nature and putting that into a bottle with, with a product um, that that customers are going to see the difference and they're oh, going to yeah. feel I'm, the difference. I'm ex- I think, you know, my my goal, and I think Dave will, will be right there with me, is that the, the, my first customer is going to be, you know, obviously we'll, we'll be the, the guinea pigs, Dave and I, but it's my <laughs> daughter. Um, yeah. And I want to be able to hand her and her mom and, you know, the, uh, the, the people that help Devon and say, listen, this is, this is it. This is legit. You're not going to get any better. Um, so that we're, we're not quite there yet, but I'm really close. Really, How amazing really is that? close. Oh, I'm, I cannot. You know, and I know there's, I'm sure that I'm going to get some static from the pharmaceutical industry. Who is Anthony Sullivan? Who does he think he is? The OxyClean guy. And now all of a sudden he's a doctor <laughs> and he thinks this, but I feel like the conversation needs to be had. Oh, I, yeah. I love guys like Sanjay Gupta getting out there. Um, I, it, it disappointed me yesterday. I can't mention the network, but it was a, a TV show that I've been on several times. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned, I said, hey, let's come on and have a, a, a conversation about CBD. The network won't allow it. Oh, um, wow. And I just think that with people like myself getting in for the right reason, yeah, you know, farming it, hopefully will open that conversation up. And mm-hmm. I definitely, you know, people want to ask me about dosage and safe amounts. So I'm going to say, look, it, everyone's going to react to Advil will work differently for all three of us here. Yeah. Um, different people respond differently to different chemicals and, and, and whatever you want to put into your body. But what I would love is, is sensible regulation. Um, I would love to have some sort of standardization. Um, and I, I, I would lo- love that my goal here would be, you know, five or six years from now to proudly say, yeah, I was part of the movement that helped destigmatize this plant. I was, Riding my, I do a lot of road riding. I was riding with um, actually George Hincapi, uh, who used to ride with Lance Armstrong. Hmm. And we were riding through a, a, a close to Greenville a couple of weeks ago. And we rode past the hemp field. And I'm with about 30 or 40 people in the group. And uh-huh. everyone's talking about getting stoned. And I, I'm like, really? And these are all pretty affluent, educated people. That's great. You know, the average price of the bike is probably, these are, these are smart mm. people, but they smell that waft of hemp or weed and they just think, oh, you know, they're, they're growing weed to get stoned. And I'm, I'm like, no, it's, it's hemp. It's industrial hemp. It's below 0.3% THC. But there's, a, there's an amazing um, uh, amount of people um, that I think is kind of sad that still really can't differentiate between the, the, the getting high- uh, component of this and and the wellness component. I mean, and I I've even even back in the UK, I was just back over. Uh, my father passed away recently, and I'm I was sorry uh, about that. It's, it's uh, thank you. But I, you know, people are asking me, you know, so you you know, you in this hemp farming, and people are you know looking at me like I'm like I'm a drug dealer or something. Right. <laughs> just hasn't like, hit no. England as much yet. Um, CBD hasn't. No, it's still very, very regulated. Um, mm. I did see one shop that had a couple of the major brands in it that you would know, but um, nowhere is. I don't know if it would grow so well in England because they don't like wet feet and it mm. rains a lot in England. <laughs> so, um, but I, it's. I mean, it's coming. It, right. It's coming like a freight train, and I think the uh, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want it around, right? And I, the follow the money. I think it's going to be a while before. Um, government and, and the states get their head around it. But I, I, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about is that we can tell the story and, and also kind of get dispel the myth about the plant, but also I, I'd like people to know the difference between gas station CBD, for lack of a better yeah, no word. Shit. There's a lot of, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. And I, I want to be a uh, shout from the rooftops about this and like, check your source, check your COAs, mm. check, check where you're getting it from, check the authenticity, check, exactly. you know, just check, check, you know, 
Um, so much spice and things like that on the gas station. <laughs> yeah. like synthetic THC yeah, to make you feel like you're getting high. Right. And then, then when people try real CBD, they they think that's bogus because they've been getting high on this fake gas station crap. You right. Know what I mean, right. It's really, yeah, it's ridiculous. That's one of those things that has, it will change, you know, like they will crack. It's down coming. It. Yeah, it's definitely coming. Well, I think one of the things, I mean, I've luckily, because of the industry I'm in, we have always been very, very careful about the claims that you can make. You can't start making claims like curing this and solving right. this. We have to be careful. So, I mean, I can only talk from my personal experience, but um, as as the sensible legislation, I'm not a fan of legislating everything, but sensible legislation, I think, is good for this. There's there's more than anecdotal evidence that this this you know, that can help so many people oh, on yeah. so many levels. And I just, more studies, um, more sensible regulation. We, I had a, we had a politician visit the, uh, I won't mention his name, but we had a, a fairly prominent politician from the state of New Jersey who, uh, and I, I was kind of shocked about how he, he really understood when he came and visited the farm and mm -hmm. saw what we were doing and saw the jobs we were creating uh -huh. and how hard we were working and, and what we were doing this for and really educated himself about the plant. We flipped him completely. That's great. He, he was up there mm -hmm. for two or three days. He said, I can't believe what you guys are doing. This is great. I mean, we've, we've witnessed firsthand up in Vermont, um, the opioid epidemic face to face. I mean, it is, it is decimated a segment of the population up in, up in Vermont. Oh yeah. And it, it seems Dave uses this analogy, you know, it's completely fine for someone to go snowboarding in Stowe they break their arm, they go to the ER, they get prescribed oxycodone sure. for, for, you know, a couple of weeks and, and a year later they're living in an, under a bridge in a box Seriously. shooting up heroin, you know, and, but that's it's okay. Terrible. You yeah. know, that, that's, that we can allow that. Um, yet, yeah, all of a sudden CBD is, is not in a, a cat category. So yeah. it's, it's kind ridiculous. Of, it's plants over pills, plants over pills. And, and uh, I, I think it's, uh, we're, we're at a moment in time. And you're talking about being like a, you want to be sort of an educator for these people, like you, the way you educated all those bike riders in one <laughs> second, just telling them about it. That's all it takes sometimes. It's just like a little bit of education. I think one of the best and then uh, they're like, ways wow, to great. convince someone is someone's got an achy knee and it's yep. like, here, try, just rub this on. Yeah. That it's like so quick to no convince doubt. someone. It's the, it's the personal stories. It's why CBD is taking root and just spreading like wildfire across the country. It's the personal stories, the personal success stories. And so many people have come up to us. I've never been in a business in my life where people have come up to me and thanked me. Like so many people have come up to us as farmers. They don't know us as anything other than that. Mm -hmm. Just stopping by, they know they heard we were the local, uh, a local hemp farm, a new local hemp farm. Thank you so much. Oh, my, my wife struggles with nausea. She's been, you know, she doesn't like to smoke weed because it, me it messes her up during the work day. Right. And now she's smoking CBD and it's completely changed her life. Or my, you know, some, my grandfather's, you know, got this or that. They all have, there's so many different personal stories and it's oh, so yeah. hard to combat that. That, that that truth and people say oh it's anecdotal it's uh there's no proven science well it's for us it's been real people and real stories word of mouth been. between friends like my both my parents just turned 70 this past weekend i went to visit them and they had a big card game and it's all people their age and i was in on the game and i had this cup that says cbd on it mm. and uh they're like oh you you try cbd and i'm like yeah you want to like i had some ointments or whatever and they just started passing it around and yeah. everyone had stories. Yeah. They all had a friend who has lupus. They have a friend who has cancer. They have a, like who all have used CBD and benefit. And it's like, wow, this is insane. You know, I don't even have to sell you guys because mm. you guys already know. Yeah. yeah. You know, like that well, community. What I think is so like exciting about this like new frontier is that the science is going to come and support this. It, there's going to be the, the clinical trials are going to the blind studies are going to come and there's going to be not, it's not going to cure everything. But there's going to be proven evidence that's going to come out in the next few years as they as everyone gets access to the plant and is able to test it. You're going to see that it's going to be supported. We don't you don't need to be a scientist to know that if you smoke cannabis, you your appetite is increased. All mm -hmm. of a sudden you may want to eat pickles and ice cream at the same time. Right. right. Well, that fixes yeah. nausea. Right. So then people that have that struggle with nausea can 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 take CBD and it can help them, you know, increase their appetite and so that they can function throughout the day. Um, there's there's so many different things that you just know you don't need necessarily to have a scientist tell you to prove it. But the, the science will come and it'll, it'll prove it. It's just going to take some time for the people to get their hands sure. around it, the, the real professionals to test it out. But in the meantime, there's so many stories of people that are that are experiencing success with it. it to me, that the science is unnecessary. 
you know, I hear people with our friend Ethan um, mm. suffered tremendous. He had a, a fist, fist fight with cancer and came out the other side. But he's a, he's a big advocate and he's on board with us. Use it for anxiety. Yeah, you know? I got my, my big wave surfer friend, Andrew Cotton, Cotty, uh, he, he broke his back out in Nazari surfing like 80 foot waves with Garrett McNamara. Oh, hook us up. We, we have a whole sports oh, section. We like check to- out <laughs> Cotty, man. Yeah, you want to yeah. see someone who takes a beating. Um, <laughs> Uh, we actually had a, a guest on our fourth episode named Jean, who she's in her 70s and she she was having 33 seizures an hour in her sleep. She was having seizures every day and she was on so many meds. And it wasn't until she started CBD that the seizures just went away like completely. She went from like 33 seizures an hour when she was sleeping during sleep studies to none. And it was it was she couldn't believe it. I met her a month after she started taking CBD at a like a, a CBD seminar. And she was just, she was in the audience, just telling the per, the person who was speaking her story. And I was like, this is amazing. I got to talk to you. Right, you know? right. Um, in the time between I talked to her there and when I actually interviewed her, she had switched CBD med- uh, medicine to a different dose. And like, it was, uh, the bottle had like, it was hard for her to read. So she didn't have the exact right dose. So the day before I interviewed her, she had taken less than she normally took and her seizures came right back. Jeez. Like she, she had the right level, switched CBDs and didn't have enough of those cannabinoids in her right. system seizures right back took more they went away again gone like like it never happened that's that to me is like wow yeah. this is really well that's you know, that's what's so exciting about the, the 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 progress that's being made with the cannabis plant right you can now dose yourself by the exact milligram that works for you right whereas mm-hmm. you know in the old days everyone's experience with 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 cannabis is You'd get a bag of weed from your your dealer, right? And you, I would smoke it. I'd want to go lay on a couch and fall asleep. My you know, one of my buddies would smoke it. It would bring out his personality, and he could smoke that for all night long. Yeah. Keep on smoking, right? So, the point is that these that each one of our bodies maybe requires a different dose to get the the effect that mm-hmm. you want to have out of it. And then, and now with the technology and the, and that we can now you know determine exactly how many milligrams will work for you. Maybe I only need two milligrams and you may need 130 milligrams, right. you know, so, but you can get that dosage, you know, the science is there, the, 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 the uh, ability to tell you, oh, you've got a thousand milligrams in this bottle. Yeah. If you, you take, know exactly you, you know exactly into. what you're going to need to take. And mm-hmm. that's exciting, you know. But you really don't know your own, like you're saying, your, your own endocannabinoid system, everyone's system is different. So you don't know, like my last guest is probably 90 pounds soaking wet. She's like four foot 10 comedian, eco comic. And one five, five milligram uh, THC gummy made her hi- hallucinate. Right. right. <laughs> so like, you never know, like it, you could be huge and still not, just take a little bit of CBD and it would work right. for you. You don't know until you try it. So we always say like, start low, titrate up until you find yeah. your like exact level. Right. If you go a little past it, you're not going to, you know, you're just wasting money. So just back it off. And then once you've got the level. I mean, it's then- funny, just mention money as well. One of the things that I really want to do is, is have this like sensibly priced because I see some of the prices in the UK, uh, there were 250 pounds. If you can do CBD for, for 19.99. No, I, I, I don't think I want to <laughs> do two payments. easy payments of 9.99. But I would, like, you know, I see, I see some of the prices, and I know now with the the genetics that we have and what we put into it, and obviously there's costs associated with with extracting it. But I think that it would be nice to make a a, a great product at a sensible price that's affordable, um, and and make it accessible. And make sure that when people are getting it, that they understand that they're getting. And I think one of the one of the greatest things, one of the things I think we're going to be the most proud of, is the fact that we will be able to tell the story of our genetics. Yeah. It will be traceable so right back oil, to the field. Right? Mm-hmm. So oil. Yeah. right, right, yeah. And I've seen that phrase thrown around <laughs> a lot, but we we did it. We That's did awesome. it by hand. This finger. Mm-hmm. Did about fifteen, twenty thousand. Wow! Did about, you know, I mean, it's, we pinky, planted a little pinky bit. We the did holes. them by hand. We wow. planted them in thirty-six count tra- trays. They they popped up. You know, they're the size of a little tiny. You know, and we when they were about ten and twelve inches tall, we put them in. We named each of our meadows. We know where the genetics were. We know what date they were taken out. We know wh- when they when the each one was. Uh, they're like your little babies. Going, they're, they're definitely. They're, they're, yeah. I think the saddest day this year. I did not want it to end. <laughs> I would have been, com- if we could have frozen time at about the end of Labor Day, uh-huh. it was beautiful. It was oh, a wow. 72 and sunny. I'm sitting in my Airstream and I get this waft of, of hemp dr- like drifting up them. Like, this is it. The- now, if you went up there, it's like nothing ever happened. 
It's the saddest <laughs> thing ever. Um, it's waiting for the next Having badge. to cut them down was just uh, like yeah. brutal. But How we, thick were the stalks and everything? When um, you were some of them were four or five inches wow. in diameter. So yeah. Those are trees. Oh, yeah. trees yeah. for sure. Yeah. They would, it was, a, what that, what that plant does in 90 days is incredible. It's amazing. I mean, it is incredible. Went in, I mean, I, I got to figure it's 120 probably from, from the minute they sprout to when we pull them out, it's about 120 days. Mm -hmm. But from um, when, you know, you put them in the ground and they're these little spindly, you know, they're never going to, <laughs> you know, never going to survive the wind. And we have right. these big mountain, you know, afternoon breezes blow through in between thunderstorms and on the, and they'd all, you know, Scary for the yeah, pretty much all of them sure. survived. Yeah. That's crazy. You start them in the greenhouse. Yep. Correct. Germinated them in the greenhouse. We did two greenhouses. Uh, and Dave, uh, um, we had a couple of close calls with a little too much humidity, right? Mm -hmm, but you managed, mm -hmm. uh, we fixed That's that right. with a little neem oil. Um, I got a, a frantic phone call. The, the, we're going to lose the crop. Oh, no. Too much humidity. Oh, but we, we used a little neem to mitigate that. What's neem? Neem oil is just a, it's an organic um, oil that comes from the neem plant. You can uh, treat, um, it's an antifungal. Oh, okay. uh, so, if you have too much humidity in your uh, greenhouse and you start to see rust, which is like an orange fungus that will grow. On, and for us, it was happening on the emerging seedlings. Mm. So I saw some of it, you know, some small signs. I would I would walk the greenhouses, you know, every day and every night. And it was amazing to watch them, you know, go through that life cycle as they grow and sprout and grow right. the, 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 the emerging leaves. He's like, he literally, you know, like mom sleeps with baby monitor. Yeah. His baby monitor was a relative humidity. <laughs> I had to, he'd, he'd sleep each night you know, with great. this and be going out checking the, the relative humidity. Well, because humidity. We, we, we germinated in you know, it was hailing outside and snowing, you know, we built the greenhouses mm. in what they call their mud season in Vermont, but there was snow still coming down. So the temperature had to be, we had to keep the temperature in the greenhouses up. And so nonetheless, I thought I was doing a great job creating like this rainforest type environment in there. It was literally raining from the top. The, 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 the condensation was raining on the seedlings. Cool. And I was like, look what I've done. This is, this is amazing. I've I, created I, I, life. Look what I've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, you know, I, too much humidity is a bad thing, you know, for, uh, for, you know, it allows funguses to take hold. And so rust is a fungus that will attack uh, the cannabis plant and you'll see it in- uh, He called me frantic. Little tiny orange spots. And <laughs> because I, I, I can imagine. Tell something. No, he's like, it's all good though. Everything's good. I solved that. Cause I bought every neem, the bottle of neem oil in the whole state of Vermont nice. and yeah. treated it. And it's all, it's all good. But they, they're, they're hardy plants. They're tough. They are hardy yeah. plants. Um, it's amazing the, the, the wind, the, 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 even towards the end of the harvest, we had a couple uh, days of frost. We went early. We harvested early, which I'm super happy. There's still farmers up there right now harvesting as we speak. Nice. And mm. I wish them luck, but I would, I'm glad <laughs> that we're out of the ground. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the amount of sweat equity you put into that is insane. Like it was a whole year. I think no. it's you know it's it's like I think there's a lot of people who have this fantasy right of you know I'm gonna I'm gonna trade it all in and when it starts till the land yeah, yeah, yeah. till the like land. Thanos but, at the yeah, end yeah, of the yeah. yeah. we can the report back war. that farming is a <laughs> difficult profession. Yeah, yeah. 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 stick you with your day job. Yeah, it's well, tough. you're like one of the only celebrities that have done this. I'm probably the only. So I, I when you guys talk about having a reality show about this, for me, I mean I'm a little biased but i would love to watch that reality show well, it was i think it's gonna be we i think we have it all we got you know we have high stakes right because there was a if you put money on us at the beginning of the year you would have bet against us you know there's no way these two are going to pull this off it's fish out of water neither of us mm -hmm. knew you know it both of us knew how to suffer from our uh, our ex expedition racing background right but you know <laughs> so it was fish out of water you know philadelphia from the city you know successful business and i'm down in florida like oh they're gonna go up there and try this <laughs> um high stakes obviously there's there's a lot on the line um, and then, you know, I think that this, this, the farming component itself, I think there's, there's a, people have this idea of, oh, we're going to go try farming. And then you add in the, the, I think the fascination around the, the, the cannabis plant and the unknowns and people are fascinated by it. And yeah. then, the, but the wait, green but, rush. and then, but wait, there's yeah. more, um, there's <laughs> an eight year old little girl who's kind of motivated exactly. these two lunatics to go up and do this. So. The boys have been filming. They got they got tears. They got joy. They got <laughs> laughter. We got a couple, uh, you know, late night campfire parties, um, flipping over equipment, getting tractors stuck, almost losing the crop a couple times. I mean, we we, we I think we we've got it all. So they're back in LA actually awesome. editing as we speak. So. And you're putting a friendly face on 
this cannabis plant that's so scary to so many people and showing that this is not something to fear. This is something that actually is helping there's my daughter. A, yeah, there's a you huge know, educational component yeah, to it. I mean, yeah. the misconceptions about the plant are massive. I mean- But I get it though. I, I understand it because, you know, the war on drugs has done a tremendous job of demonizing mm -hmm. this plant. And if you put a hemp plant in a lineup, we're growing exactly. next to a full THC low. They, you could, could not tell the difference. <laughs> if you put them in the lineup, we're going to go, right, which one? Right. <laughs> they, it looks like weed. It smells like weed. It feels like weed. It, it, it tastes it, like it weed. Tastes like weed. Okay. It, it's, yeah. I mean, they almost look identical. So I could, I can completely understand, you know, um, 12 months ago, even today, if you had that in your car, a bag of that, you get arrested. It, it's um, when I went after my, when my father died, I went straight from the farm to the plane in my farm clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the plane. I'm like, someone's got some weed on this plane. And I'm like, shit, it's me. You're humming with it. I am like, my boots on. And I'm like, I smell weed. And I'm like, oh, it's me. It's in my laces. Um, but it's, yeah, I, so I, I understand that. I, I get the, um, the confusion. I get the, it's been demonized. You know, reefer madness for for how many how many years? So yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of money saying that it's bad. You know, there's a lot of money for so many years trying to say that like these drugs are good, these drugs are bad. Yeah, one one hundred percent. So you know, um, I've I've got a very very personal story here, and I think by doing it the hard way, uh, I don't want to say we put our ten thousand hours in, although we may have. We have an um, intimate relationship put, with the plant. We, Combined, we put, uh, yeah, we put, uh, you know, our 10,000 hours in this year, if, if you will, to, for lack of a better, you know, to say, right, we, we didn't just, uh, we didn't just do this, just slap, on, slap my name on a bottle or my right. daughter's name on a bottle and, and do this. Uh, we, we wanted to, we wanted to do it the hard way and I would do it all over again. Absolutely. I don't know if you're going to go for it. You're going to, <laughs> you're going to do it all over again next year, right? Yeah, we are. Yeah. 100%. And it will be, um, I think we'll, we'll go bigger. Um, I don't think we'll go that much bigger. But I, I, I'm looking forward to knowing how to drive a tractor <laughs> and, and knowing how to use a plastic layer and how to plastic removal and how to use Everything. a water wheel and, and, right. and looking so forward much to just second time around, right? Everything's easier second right. time around. Now you're a master at it. Well, you're doing, not quite a master, but we-, we <laughs> Doing we, donuts we, in the fields with the tractor. <laughs> we definitely you know more than average. I definitely want to come yeah, check it out. We definitely got to come we up. We definitely will. That's pretty awesome. Um, I would I would be remiss to not talk about pitchmen. Sure. Because I, I actually like marathon some pitchmen this weekend. Yeah, I, did. I, haven't watched <laughs> I had some C B D chilled yeah. out. Watched some pitchmen. Uh yeah, on YouTube. If anyone hasn't seen Pitchmen, you can check it out on their episodes on YouTube. It was on Discovery Channel originally. Yeah, right? Discovery Channel, yeah, about ten years ago. So Pitchmen came out like just after Shark Tank or parallel to Shark Tank. I want to say that Pitchmen had Pre, pre Shark Tank, first episode, Precursor. right about the same time. Awesome. Shark Tank wasn't what it is today. I think the first season of Shark Tank struggled. They hadn't figured out the format. They taken the show from I think there was a Japanese version and an English version on Dragon's Den and Dragon's Lair. And I think the sharks they the, they put together. They hadn't got the ensemble. They hadn't got the drama. And Pitchman was uh, was pre Shark Tank. And I I say to this day, I think if Billy had not passed away. Um, we would still be on the air oh, and give yeah. the Shark Tank a run for its money. Oh, man. It was such a good show. You and Billy Mays, um, you would basically have inventors come in. And it was yep. probably like during the recession, right? It was like- It right, was right. It was right, right, right around the recession. So like- these are these are Americans that are trying to figure out some way to to get some money. They've got great ideas. They're pitching it to you guys, and instead of just being like these massive investors that just throw money at it, like you would figure out which of their inventions could you could probably make a commercial for and sell, or you could actually push and, and stand behind and put your brand behind it. I thought that was genius. So like you'd take two of these inventors. I'm explaining your show to you. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you take two inventions and then you'd make an infomercial. Either yep. you or Billy would be the yep. main guy in, in the commercial. Mostly Billy. Billy, right? Yeah, but Billy, you were producing. Billy was a camera. I mean, you were doing so much behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically, Billy and I met early, early and we actually met on the road selling uh, uh, all kinds of different products. But I met him in Pittsburgh uh, back in the mid 90s. And then um, he got, we both uh, got our start on HSN, selling products on HSN. Right. And the guys Home who shopping created, network. The, yeah, the, the guys that created OxyClean um, recruited Billy to be their spokesperson. And um, we both sort of branched out from HSN and I started a production company and Billy was a gun for hire spokesperson. And I had some success making commercials and the owners of OxyClean at the time came to me and they, and Billy and I used to compete um, uh -huh. for products because we were both, you know, trying to get our hands on the- You're the, the like, two big guns in the field. And, um, and then the owners of OxyClean came to me and said, you know, how do you feel about 
um, working with Billy on a project and you you produce it and let Billy be in it. And I, Billy and I looked at each other, I'm like, no way. There's no <laughs> way I'm going to work with competitors, right? Anyway, right. We, we ended out, I, I really understood where Billy came from because we both come up. It's very similar really to, to we didn't just arrive on television. We were, you know, I sold on the street corners in London. I did every single convention center all over the States. Billy and I put our, our time in selling one-on-one. Yeah, I think Mano. they saw like on your show, Billy was like doing it on the boardwalk. In yeah, Atlantic yeah. City Billy started on Atlantic City boardwalk. Yeah. So um, once we, uh, one, and I really understood how Billy spoke and, and, I, and I was a big fan of his style, even though not everyone was. I, I loved Billy's <laughs> kind of, like, Billy Mays here. Yeah, yeah. Got, if Billy Mays was alive, Billy Mays here for CBD. It would be a, oh, it would man, be a big trouble. Amazing. But um, and Pitchman, um, we we uh, put a reel together for a show because I always told Billy because he was such a character. I said, you know, buddy, there's a show here. Um, yeah. And uh, anyway, so you're the mastermind behind these shows. Yeah. We got the show out <laughs> to uh, and met Tom Pierce in uh, in a in a uh, wellness retreat in Calabasas, and uh, and I said, Tom, I I I got to I got to show you this this reel I have, and Tom loved it. And long story short, ended up going to Discovery Channel, and then um, we shot 13 episodes out of the gate, and um, we weren't quite sure what the show was. And uh-huh. I remember going to vent to a restaurant in, in Studio City in LA and Tom said to this big dinner with like the Godfather, right? Tom sits us down and, right. like, and we're it's, okay, we're either in trouble <laughs> or something big is gonna happen. And Tom just says, he goes, right, I, I got the show. And we're like, what do you mean you got the show? We've been filming <laughs> this for six months. You don't have the show? Right. Cause we figured he just knew. Anyway, he pulls us aside, he goes, I got the show. He goes, you guys, we're in the middle of the biggest recession. It's funny that you notice because we're right. in the middle of the biggest recession. The average guy on the street is hurting. They're looking for they're looking for some inspiration. They're looking, and you you two are the guys. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. because you you two are the dream makers. Yes. Me and Billy and I. That's it. So um, and he was right. And I, and the show was a hit out of the gate. And um it was it was such an exciting period in my life that it was only 12 weeks we had 13 weeks and then on the on the end of the 12th week billy died of a heart attack Ugh. and i was i wanted to wake him up and uh. and kill him myself because i was like you can't leave me now oh, yeah so heartbreaking <laughs> um you know a lot of times gone by and I, and there's not a day that goes by when i when i don't miss him um because we it's it, it was so exciting what we were doing and uh, unfortunately billy was in really bad shape and uh, he passed away before the last episode and um and the show never worked Without him, I did a second season. I'm glad I did it. Second season, we tried it. I worked with his son Billy uh, B3. I call him, <laughs> and we kept the, the crew together. Uh-huh. But it needed, it needed the character of Billy in it to, yeah. to make it work. So, um, and I sort of just called my jets on on any scripted television um, or unscripted television, and because uh, I just it kind of left a little bit of a big hole in my life when Billy died. God, it was a really imagine. big hole. I went into a, like a dark hole for like about a year when I just couldn't crawl out of it, and I just but I kept working. That's the one thing I did. I just kept producing commercials, and I was just like, you know, I have to step up. And then OxyClean asked me to to take over, and mm-hmm. at first I was very, I was afraid to take over from Billy when they it's asked big me. Shoes to fill. I was a big blue I shirt actually, to fill. I mean, I'll tell you now, I actually at first I was I just don't know if I can do it. I'm not that yeah. I can do it. I knew I could do it, but I'm I don't know if I want to do it because I just think there's, you know, pe- there were people who loved him. And um the guys over there said, look, you're the you're the guy. You're the only guy that can do it. And, and true. so I'm I'm glad I did it. Um keeping the brand alive, love OxyClean and and Billy Billy started that brand. He really did. And then um, I sort of was like, I'm never going to do another TV. Because when Billy died, I feel like it was just a weird time in my life. And then when this project came up with the CBD, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make a phone call. <laughs> we're going to get we're going to get the cameras back out here and roll again. So That's it's awesome. been almost 10 years since Billy passed away. Wow. Um, but that was a, uh, the last thing we ever did together. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, Billy was the star of the show, right? He was, you know, I was kind of, he was Batman and I'm Robin. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a... a and um, and I think the show did a great job of, of showing the juxtaposition between the two of us. Yeah. But um, um, and he always got the interview with Jay Leno with Conan. He was always they we go oh. and they always want to talk to Billy. No one ever want to talk to us. They, they push what? you to the second. Chair. So I finally told Billy, I'm like, listen, but if they don't want to talk to me, I'll just stay in my hotel room. I don't care anyway. But the one thing I said, I said if the Tonight Show, 
If we ever go to the Tonight Show, I'll always come. I'll carry your bags. I'll do your makeup. I'll, do, I'll, I'll blacken your beard. I don't care who. I'll, I don't care. I'll make the tea. Solid black I'll get beard. your food. I'll just go. Uh-huh. Well, his beard was greater than Santa Claus. Really? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. He had a whole makeup routine that you will never truly know. Wow. But um, anyway, the uh, and we got a phone call from the Tonight Show to to come to the Tonight Show, and Conan was doing it. And um, Billy was really, really excited. He called me and I was in the Bahamas at the time. He goes, Sully, I got you on The Tonight Show. And he was super, super excited. And he was like, I'm like, me? On The Tonight Show with like the two of us. I'm like, right. not just you. I'm not going to carry your bags. Like, me <laughs> and you. Right. We're both going to be on. I get a goes, mic, right? He goes, yeah, yeah. And um, we did The Tonight Show on the 22nd of June, uh, 2009, 2008, 2008 it was. Um, and uh, no, 2000. It would be 2009, 22nd of June, 2009. And the last thing we ever did together, the last thing time we were ever seen in public was on The Tonight Show. Wow. Yeah, so it was- uh, That's amazing. Yeah, it was, was uh, I, I miss him. He's a great guy. He would have loved this. He would have, he would have, <laughs> the, the whole CBD space. I'll uh, bet. Well, he was suffering, um, he, a lot of people don't know this either, if we're talking about Billy. Uh, he was going in, the day he died, he was going in for his third hip surgery. Oh. So he had had, two hip surgeries already that had gone horribly wrong and he'd had a Mercer infection in one of them. He was on a cocktail of, of drugs to stop the infection that no one will ever truly know. And, um, you know, I often wonder with the pain he was in, I mean, he had a hip replacement, but I, I, I wonder, and you know, this is winding back the clock where he would, his position on this, I know would have been, you know, he would have, he would have been a fan 100%. Wow. Yeah, long live Billy Mays. Yeah, long exactly. live your laundry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember watching uh, that last episode where it was like a, a battle between you and him to see who could be the better he was there. pitchman in oh, yeah. person. Yeah, I was there. Were yeah. you? Yep, yeah, that was at the Philadelphia Convention Center. Right, yeah. and you, you like ran up the steps of the Philadelphia yeah, Art Museum yeah. like Rocky. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Well, B- Billy never wanted me to ever outshine him, ever. In a, in a, <laughs> yeah. in a like, even when, when I went to the Tonight Show, Conan, uh, Conan asked me to sit next to him. Oh, I, Conan didn't ask me. I, we just got word that I was sitting next to Conan. Mm-hmm. Billy almost refused to go out there. He's like, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> top billing. Yeah, yeah, little Sully heavy, but uh, right. he was a character man. So that, that episode in uh, of the Pitchmen, Sully came to my apartment. I was living with my wife. We weren't married at the time. And uh, he rolls up with all the cameras. It's a uh, it's like flash forward to all the cameras we've had on us with the GoPros. But he rolled up in his uh, his his truck, all strapped with GoPros, and he's like, "I need you to I need your help. I'm uh, I, I got a pitch off with uh, with Billy, and I need to and I want to uh-huh. I want to stack the deck, you know. Uh, so it was the the episode was that they were gonna each have a product, and whoever sold the most at the end of the, their their five minute pitch was the winner of the pitch. So he comes to my place, and we hatched a plan where basically I was gonna invite all my friends and f- uh, family from Philadelphia to the to the show, unbeknownst to Billy, and they right. were all gonna like hover around Sully's booth, and I was paying them all twenty bucks a piece <laughs> to be there, and they were all gonna go buy a twenty dollar mop from from Sully. So Put some he won <laughs> hands down, and uh, Billy's booth was quiet. And Sully's booth he was, was doing the was, same was thing. Booming. It was the whole thing was completely. It was a rigged fight. I'm <laughs> telling you, it was a rigged fight. The whole thing. But oh, uh, funny. and the funny thing is, he never got to see that episode. Oh. yeah, he died. He died the day before that episode was made. So um, wow. But I still keep in touch with his his family. Um, and uh, yeah, too young. He was 50, 50 when he passed away, um, which I just turned 50 this year. So, so you were like 10 years younger than him? Yeah? yeah, 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. We, uh, we had a, we had a lot, but I feel like we're getting the band back together a little bit with, uh, with what we've been filming. I got the, a lot of the guys that worked on Pitchman have been uh, embedded on the farm. That's great. Um, and they have suffered this year. <laughs> we made our, our camera crew has suffered. There's a couple <laughs> of them left, but they've all gone back to LA. So I can't wait to see what comes out of it. And, if there's one thing that comes out of the TV component of what we're doing, um, cause it isn't just a TV show now, right? It's, you know, we can stream this and it's going to be on Netflix and Apple TV and whatever. If there's one thing that comes out of it, if we can educate a little bit and dispel oh, some yeah. of the myths around what we're doing, I think that that is going to be, um, um, that, that'll be a real a feather in, in, in our cap, I think. For, and plus it's, uh, just to share the story. It's been, uh, it's been, a, it's been a fist fight this year. I think things like, this podcast and what you are doing is is 
an, an amazing platform to educate and it's helping like push humanity forward in a way like it's helping all these people who didn't know that this was something that they could benefit from and now they're they're waking up to it that like wow there's other things that i can do other than just like jump on this prescription well, I, bandwagon. I, I, I still think there's there's people who are afraid to talk about it the fact the network i was talking to last night is a big network it was actually one of the girls that work for leno is now okay. working for another show. And I said, I'll come on the show. I'll talk about CBD. And she said, I, we, we can't talk about it. Uh, and the fact that we can't even have a conversation about it in, in some platforms, and this is a platform where it really should be talked about. It's a yeah. family channel. There's uh, moms watching. There's people with all kinds of medical conditions. And the sure. fact that you've got guys like Sanjay Gupta out there, yeah. um, who I think has done an incredible job. Finally, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a, a PhD and a doctor mm -hmm. and a well, well respected journalist is, has flipped his position. And it, it does appear that both administrations are flipping their positions. But, you know, there's still people getting arrested. Um, the legislation still has to be pushed through in some states, uh, yeah, piece by piece. But um, we'll be in the fight. We're in it. Yeah, it yeah, sounds like we're you're definitely right. not, we're not going anywhere. Like, when, it, when do you think you're going to be starting to release products and sell products? I wish we had product right now. Um, for anyone listening, it's <laughs> the reason it's taking so long is because what we're doing is we think is is I don't think I know it's cutting edge, and we we got to get our COAs right, and we got to get we got to get it perfect. But I um, we're going to be soft launching, soft launching for MJ BizCon. Um, and um, I you know 2020 is going to be bring 2020. Yeah, we That's we the hope. we're right now we don't have enough biomass we're extracting as we speak mm -hmm. we're extracting as fast as we can as well as we can and building up a uh, uh, inventory of uh of the the the, the creme de la creme the piece de resistance <laughs> what, what we have going on i'm really excited about i i, I don't want to talk about it too much because it's but you can come visit i'll show i'd rather show it to you than Definitely. tell you about it yeah i can't wait it's to make one that hour five from here to vermont or just nice. keep an eye out on uh, montcush.com yeah, or follow us on instagram yep, we're on instagram at uh montcush m-o-n-t-k-u-s-h and um and uh yeah instagram is best place and and the website right now is still in development because our finished product isn't done but I think one of the things that Dave and I have done, we're not, I, we almost jumped the gun in the spring because I was, we got to get a product. Gotta get it we got to get it. And, and, and that was the, the, the thinking of my old world as we move extremely quickly. And, and thank God, Dave kind of cooled my jets a little bit. And was like, Sully, we got to do this with our own genetics. We have to do this right. right. And I, I sort of had to, had to come off the gas a little bit. The, in the, the space that I've come from, um, the as seen on TV space, that, mm -hmm. that pitch man world, we move extremely quickly. But I think because of the nature of this, the cooling our jets a little bit and doing it a little bit more methodically and slowly and, and differentiating ourselves is, is the right move. So that's cool. I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to give, uh, uh, the tincture. Ugh. I actually have the tincture. I'm on the, I'm like on the brink right now. I want to, we did our first, uh, first couple of tinctures and, uh, I think that they're, they're unbelievable. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. we're going to name it for Devon. That was the the very first one That's we're going to cool. do. But I'll well, get you. We'll get you a sample. You can be the first awesome. one. To, for, for, first one. <laughs> yeah. First one to try. For sure. It. If you ever need like logos or packaging, I was just the, we were talking to our designer back at the uh, home base who did the illustrator version of our logo. Actually, I love it by the way. He actually did the OxyClean logo. Get oh really? He's a packaging designer. He did like Oreos. Like, yeah. Everything. Lysol. But he, he's like, you're going to see the OxyClean guy. I did the OxyClean logo, and he showed us. That's so incredible. Cool. So if you ever need someone who's like consistent with your brand already. Yeah, all right. I love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I'll give you his card. But very cool, guys. It was so so much fun talking to you. And uh, Likewise. thanks for hosting this. It's really great no, to be able no to meet No problem. You in thanks for making the effort. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you updated with uh, anything that's coming down the pike. And uh, we'll hopefully see yeah, you in Vegas, Yeah, I can't wait to right? sample it. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Are yeah. you going to be in Vegas? Which, which show? When is MJ that? BizCon in December? Maybe. There's about we'll 30. Yeah. We're, we're having yeah. kids together. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Cole. The CBDGang.com. The official subreddit for fans of the CBD Source podcast. Questions. Answers. CBD Gangsters. At Karma. At Sweet. Sweet Karma. Here, the CBD gang. Give the show a call at 1 833 223 4264. That's 1 833 CBD gang. How cool was it that Anthony Sully Sullivan, the OxyClean guy, 
recorded drops for our podcast. I want to play them for you guys. Um, check these out. This is what a what a class act. You know, we just asked him off the cuff at the end of the interview. Can you can you record a couple drops for us? Let me uh, let me silence down the the uh, end of the episode music so you can just hear these like pure recorded drops. It could, before we go, like, can you give us a little drop? Just say like. This is Anthony Sullivan yeah. for CBD Source Podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Do you like want to right full level? Mic. Can you film them? Anthony Sullivan yeah, 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 yeah. for CBD Source. Yeah. Um, to, to the camera or just do you want the audio? Uh, yeah, camera too. Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for the CBD Source Podcast. You've heard the rest. Now listen to the best. Yo, what's up, CBD gang? Yo, CBD gang. This is Anthony Sullivan, and you're listening to the CBD Source Podcast. Yo, CBD gang, what's up? This is Anthony Sullivan, and you're listening to the CBD Source Podcast. Gang, he's talking to you. <laughs> you it's pretty damn cool. We, I'm sure we'll be playing those a lot on the show. Uh, and as we get bigger and bigger guests, we'll, we'll have them record drops. We never really even thought about doing that until now. I mean, like You have a guy that's known for having that projecting voice, that like booming British voice. It's like... Um, very identifiable. So, and he's got his own catchphrases and everything. I love it. How how fun was that interview, though? That was that was a great interview. I mean, they were so down to earth. You know, they were just fantastic people, both of them. Yeah, and like the the you can tell this is a labor of love. It's not just you know a reality show or just you know a get rich quick scheme or some bullshit like that. Like they are really working the land with their hands like doing it up there in the cold in the rain in vermont you know slogging through the mud <laughs> like very dedicated yeah like th- they are the real deal like i don't know have you met any celebrity or talked to any celebrity that has done something like this not even a little <laughs> not even close <laughs> exactly <laughs> i mean they're very passionate about it that's i think that's why they want to get down and dirty with it they want to get in there see the all aspects growing it from the seed yeah i mean just from picking out the everything. seeds from picking i mean like they really did every element of this like what a cool premise for a show too like of, of all the reality shows um out there this is right up my alley of the kind of show that i like to watch you know like really something that uh you're watching them build this thing it's like um and if you think of uh, CBD oil as like a liquid version of gold because it's worth so much, like they're making this gold. Liquid gold. They're not pulling it from the earth. They're, they're planting and then it grows out of the earth and then they kind of, it's almost like digging for treasure, but they're making it themselves. It's pretty amazing. Right. You can tell how much he loves his daughter. Oh yeah. That's where his passion came from. Yeah, that's, I mean, when I read that initial um, article about why he was doing this, it was like, oh man, it hit me on a, on a really personal level. And that's when I was like, man, we got to meet this guy like as soon as possible. And uh, we, were, we had like scheduled for him to even come here. And then his dad died like totally out of the blue. And, uh, and so he went like straight from the farm to, to England for the funeral. And we caught, we got the first interview of him coming back to America. Like he got off the plane at eight thirty, and we were interviewing him by ten fifteen. You know, like we we really got a very raw. You know, they they're just off the farm. They just did their, um, they're doing their extraction now. So they they just did their harvest, and uh, like we got a, a really, we got a scoop kind of. You know, like we really did get like the first story of what's going on up there and since he's been back yeah. and you know it's kind of amazing like i can imagine you know celebrities who uh you know they do these press junkets they do these media junkets like they had a whole bunch of media lined up after us we were first um but like how many of them don't know anything about cbd to be able to talk to them on a level where like they we actually know what the hell we're talking about you know like i actually can speak to them about what they're really doing and and understand like a lot of these people are just coming in like they might have just been interviewing uh you know hank azaria yesterday or something <laughs> like they don't they don't have a, any idea what the hell these guys have been through so it was really cool. I'm sure it was cool for them, too, to be able to talk about, you know, something that they have such passion in that we also have such passion in and and, and wanting to be able to spread the word about CBD. Like the, the story he had about 
um, contacting that um, show that he was, I don't know what show he was talking about. It was it sounded like The View maybe or something, like one of those morning shows, like a, um, I don't know. Did you, could you figure it out? No, he, he said he didn't want to really, you know, shout out. To right. Didn't want to say the network but... or anything, but, but it was like one of those morning show type things probably where it's just like, they're not ready for it yet. You know, it's, it reminded me of Back to the Future where it's like, but you know, your kids are going to love it that kind of thing right i was like those morning shows are not ready for cbd yet they will be in a year in a year i guarantee they'll be knocking on his door like banging down his door right. please come back and talk to us about this grow it and they will come <laughs> <laughs> especially when he gets his show off the ground like when that happens speaking of which dum, dum, dum. holy shit gang <laughs> We had our, our little 4K camera that we just got, which is a pretty dope camera. Uh, that's what we shot on. But they had a massive network TV type camera, you know, and and like they are filming for Netflix or I'm not sure. They said Netflix, but also probably Discovery Channel. They said uh, net, at all the streaming services. All the streaming Netflix, services. Right. Apple, TV, everything. Yeah, so. yeah. He dropped all those names. It's like, okay. And we like, they interviewed me. They like talked to me and, and they filmed the entire interview. Um, and we signed releases that we both could be on the show and man, that's cool. <laughs> like we were not <laughs> expecting that at all. No, that was a bonus. Yeah, that was dope. They were also talking, they, he kept inviting us to, to Vermont. We are definitely going to Vermont to check out that hemp yeah, farm next year. Definitely. Oh man. How, like just the way him and Dave explained it, uh, how, how beautiful this farm is and how cool it is to like get dropped off at that Mount Cush base camp or whatever, the, the top. And then like just soak it all in i want to do that like i was i was experiencing it through them in a way when they were explaining it i was like how many people can say that they're gonna probably be working on a farm for a day or two in vermont next to anthony sullivan <laughs> picking <laughs> hemp plants and planting seeds right right watering plants or whatever the hell we'd be i don't know what they'd have us do trimming i don't know <laughs> smelling like hemp with anthony <laughs> sullivan like that's a book title right there seriously <laughs> wow we're gonna have to smoke some of their hemp, right? Oh yeah. Well, he already. <laughs> hey, he already said. If Anthony, if you're listening to this, we got you on video and on audio. You said you would be the first. Oh yeah, we will be the first to try it. So I can't wait to try that. To that. <laughs> the the gourmet version of CBD that like pièce de résistance. He said, um, like the wine, the fine wine. And I also, you know, like the terroir, like we, we talked about before, like different areas, have, uh, like different vineyards, depending on the soil and the, the environment, they have different terroirs for their wine. Same with weed, same with hemp. So I want to see what the terroir of Vermont is like. And um, I will definitely be sampling that. Do you know what they, you know what they mentioned a lot of times and they even asked us multiple times if we were going? Their soft launch at MJ BizCon next month. Uh, did you happen to catch where that was? Oh, yeah. Vegas, baby. Vegas, baby. <laughs> I so want to go to Vegas, and uh, that is to be determined. We will find out in the next couple weeks if we're going to be able to go to that. Well, what'd they say? 1,300 vendors? Oh, my God, yeah. some 35,000 uh, just people walking around attending. Uh, like so, yeah, so much. It's it. That is the. That seems like a great convention to hit up. Mount Cush Soft. Um, it's their soft launch. Soft launch. So if we want to be able to be one of the first to sample it, we got to get over. The, we got to get, gotta get we gotta there. Start packing. Exactly. Going. So see if we can pull that off. A couple of days off the snow here would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by then we'll be. You know, we're in the Hudson Valley. We'll be up to our necks and, and the white stuff. Um, I just want to mention, we just recorded this Monday morning, so we busted our ass to get this audio and uh, also the video. We're, we're chopping it up. It's almost done. Uh, I don't know what we'll get up t tonight as far as video, Wednesday night, but uh, maybe tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. Tomorrow. We'll probably, I don't know if we want to put the whole thing up or we're going to bust it up into little pieces and, and you know, bite-sized samples. Uh, Office watch party first. <laughs> <laughs> and if we do make the cut on that Netflix show, man, we got to have a, like a, a real viewing party with the CBD gang somewhere, maybe in right. the city. Signing autographs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that will be so sweet. We're going to have the full video version of this interview uh, on YouTube and on our website, cbdsourcepodcast.com. Um, we're going to transcribe the entire interview so any news publication can pull quotes 
Just make sure to credit the podcast and myself, Cole Chaney. That's C O L C H E N E Y. Uh, and the CBD Source Podcast is CBD, you know, Source Podcast. It's so just spelled out. dot com. Um, and I think we we're going to put together a blog post. I'm going to embed the videos from YouTube um, of the episode of Pitchman, where Billy Mays and Anthony Sullivan had their epic rigged with the help of Dave Christian pitch off showdown in Philadelphia. Uh, also, their final appearance on the Tonight Show with Conan, um, which Billy uh, was kind of pissed that. <laughs> Sully got the seat next to Conan. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be throwing that stuff up in the next couple days. So if you're not listening to this today, uh, it should be up, you know, by Friday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, we have other news to announce. Uh, with the number 60. Do you want to make this announcement, Rai? How do we announce this? So we have we have another awesome piece of news to announce, gang. Um, you know how we say we're expanding all the time as far as our CBD source locations. Well, we lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're expanding massively. Um, CBDSourceCenter.com. Go check it out. How many locations there are there, Roy? We have sixty. Six zero. We went store locations. We went from eight to sixty overnight. Well, I mean, yeah. Like I said, we lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you live in the New York, Pennsylvania area, which is where all of our locations are, there's probably a CBD source location near you. So go to cbdsourcecenter.com if you want to get quality third-party tested CBD. CBDSourceCenter.com. We don't have an e-commerce set up yet, but it's it. We have actual sixty brick and mortar locations. Exactly. For you to go and buy CBD today. Wow. And we're not saying there's not going to be an e-commerce. There will be eventually. Eventually. Just be patient. We got sixty stores. For <laughs> We've you. got Take sixty that, right? locations, my friends. Holy crap! Don't um, be greedy. Yeah. It turns out we're one of the biggest CBD retailers in the country. <laughs> in the country, we haven't re- we haven't been able to talk about it yet, but now we can finally talk about and it. And the biggest on the East Coast, yeah, definitely the biggest on the East Coast. So, um, CBDSourceCenter.com for all of our locations. We're gonna have to change that commercial because that one commercial only read the eight stores. We'll get there. Maybe next episode. Uh, yeah, we, we were working our asses off to get this one done, done for you guys. Um, and guess what? The next episode is going to be killer, too. Like, we've got back-to-back big-ass guests. The next, like, three or four guests are are huge. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode because we really enjoyed making it. Um, and we also... Th- we also filmed our first cannabidite. We didn't put it up yet and didn't put it on the episode, but we filmed that as a test in our cannabidite test kitchen, which is a beautiful kitchen uh, in a mansion. <laughs> it's it's a great place to uh, bring celebrity guests to try some CBD-infused food and beverages. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, on Wolf Lake right here in Rock Hill, right? Wolf Lake? Wolf, Wolf Lake, yep. Yeah, like Derek Jeter has a house very nearby our... <laughs> <laughs> our nice. CBD test kitchen. So once we get that up in order, we'll be having Chef Ryan here making some CBD meals and inviting celebrities to come, come and come on over, be on the show, help prepare the meal, and enjoy some delicious CBD meals. We're gonna, we're really gonna be expanding pretty fast now, gang. So yeah, um, we're blowing up over here. I tried to. I wanted to keep this episode short, but we ended up going pretty long with uh, Anthony and Dave. Uh, to Anthony Sullivan and Dave Christian, thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys are welcome back here anytime. Obviously, uh, great guests and uh, the passion you guys both have for the plant um, astounded us. So we are really psyched to have you guys on. Stop and, by the cannabidiet kitchen. Yeah, grab a meal. Exactly. If you're if you're in the Hudson Valley, you know, let us know. Swing by, and we'll have, Ryan will make you up something with CBD in it. <laughs> you know, eventually, once they have their, you know, what would be dope actually, once they have their finished product, like we can make a, a Mount Kush meal. Like we could, you could infuse it in something, and we could make a specific like Mount Kush 
Like, uh, I'll make a meal and name it after his daughter Devin for him. Yeah, that would be, you know, be dedicated to her for that. That would be nice. All right, gang. This was uh, what a what an amazing. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I'm out of lack of words here. What an amazing episode. That was pretty intense. Um, I know I got pretty deep in the beginning there and uh, said some personal stuff um, and, you know, opened up a bit. I, We're human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have lives outside of CBD, you know, but we just want to connect with you guys. Maybe you're going through some things also as well. Yeah. You know, build that connection with our fans and the gang. So That's true. You don't want to mention your mom or anything, do you? Too close, uh, though? Yeah, no, it's fine. Because uh, even though on top of everything going on as well, um, I lost my mother unexpectedly October 15th. And uh, that hit me really hard. But with the love and support of the CBD Source podcast team and family, you know, help me get through it every day. So we're not just CBD enthusiasts. We're not just CBD users. You know, we have lives outside, you know, so... If you guys could connect with us, hit us up on our Reddit page, you know. Yeah, check out the Reddit. The, our subreddit is thecbdgang.com. Uh, or if you're already on Reddit, it's r slash cbdgang. Um, yeah, connect with us there. Cass is running that board, you know, like a, a mad woman. She's loving it. So she'll, she'll interact with you. Um, starting next week, we're going to start giving away CBD at, like every episode. We're going to start giving away yeah. prizes. Yeah. Like we've got, we've got a good... CBD prize, what, do you, what are we calling it? It's not a prize closet. What is it? CBD prize pot or something like that? Sorry, pod. We don't have a name right. for it yet. Maybe help it's us. some shit you're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> if you can help us name where we keep our CBD pr- prizes, uh, you know, throw. maybe we'll post that on Reddit and like come up, who can come up with the best name and we'll, we'll call it whatever the best name is for it. Uh, so check out our Reddit and, and we'll have that little contest going and whoever wins that will get a prize. Participate in the contest. Follow the rules. <laughs> do the contest. We, we, You know what? Hardly anyone competes in our contest and like people just win them really easily. Like our contests are probably the, some of the easiest contests because people don't follow the rules. Like if you follow the rules and you act fast, you're going to win CBD. Come on. <laughs> right. Not low grade stuff. No. High, high quality, quality CBD. Good CBD. Like sometimes I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we did an unboxing video while we were in Hoboken. I'm not gonna reveal uh whose C B D I unboxed and we consumed a lot of. Uh but we will be uploading that video shortly. In the next several weeks, I guess. We're going to start uploading videos. We haven't really uploaded any videos yet to our YouTube lot. page. We have a lot of We have so much video. video content that, like, we can't wait to start releasing. Over time, we've just been building everything. So now we're, we're establishing all of our identities. And now we, we were really building everything up. So now we can start really rolling out video and stuff like that. All right. So, gang, next week, another big... I don't know. What, what should we even call big guests? Super guests. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a we've got a CBD influencer and owner of a CBD company who has like a half a million, over half a million subscribers on Instagram. Coming up next time. Uh, so come, make sure to swing by, <laughs> make sure to subscribe to us. So you'll it, our episode will just drop right into your phone, no problem, uh, on I, iTunes. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, whatever you use to listen to your podcast. Oh, and make sure make sure to stick around till the end of the credits. I'm going to throw one last Anthony Sullivan drop at the very end. We always like to throw a little like nugget from the show that didn't make the actual episode into the very end. So like if you haven't been sticking around till after the credits, like, you know, any good Marvel movie, start doing it because we usually throw like either mistakes or just funny outtakes or whatever uh at the very end so make sure you stick around to the very end of the credits and you'll hear that anthony sullivan mystery drop so we'll cbd you next wednesday give the show a call at 1-833-223-4264 
is written, produced, and hosted by Cole Chaney. Graphic design, photo, and artwork by Ryan Weber, Johnny D, Kevin Bierfeldt, Steve, and Cole Chaney. Marketing by Penny Spinazzola. Special thanks to our resident CBD guru, Akash Patel, our CBD source vape lounge expert, Anthony Maltese, our Sea Body Fitness instructor, Danny, our personal cannabidiet CBD chef, Ryan Weber, our CBD news co host and vocal artist, Tasha Miller, and our CBD gang, subreddit mod, social media maven, and wrap up girl Cass. That's me. Additional thanks to Caitlin, Liz, Ryan, and Kevin for lending your vocal talent. Want to be a guest on the show? Or do you have a great weed man van story? Or a story about your craziest experience with the munchies? Call us at 1-833-CBD-GANG. Again, that's 1-833-223-4264. And leave a message. If we like your story, we might play it on the show. Visit us on cbdsourcepodcast.com for all your links to social media, YouTube, and our message board, r slash cbdgang on Reddit. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next week. All information in this podcast or its related social media pages and interactions are for informational purposes only. The CBD Source Podcast does not offer medical advice. Its host, Cole Cheney, is not a medical professional. His experiences with cannabidiol and other cannabinoids are his own and may not affect you the same way. Everybody's endocannabinoid system is different. The statements made regarding CBD products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The efficacy of these products and the testimonials made have not been confirmed by FDA-approved research. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All information presented here is not meant as a substitute for or alternative to information from healthcare practitioners. Please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product. The Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act requires this notice. Do you like or want to try quality, third-party tested CBD? Do you live in the New York, Pennsylvania area? We got you covered, gang. Stop by any of our eight convenient CBD source locations. We currently have New York stores in Middletown, Geneseo, New Paltz, Syracuse, Troy, Albany, and Chatham. We also have one in Pittston, PA. We're growing more each month, so check in with cbdsourcecenter.com to find our addresses and new store locations. While you're there, sign up for our mailing list. We're adding new stores across New York and Pennsylvania all the time. We may soon be expanding to a town near you. free CBD? Sign up for Loyal and Save Online or on your phone and use it whenever you shop at CBD Source locations. You'll earn points towards free products and other cool merch. Sign up for free at cbdsourcepodcast.com slash loyal. You can download the Loyal and Save app on iTunes or Google Play. That's our loyalty app. Call Help Designed It. <laughs> What is the worst thing that you've ever eaten, you've ever done for food to get food while you had the munchies? I'd love to know that. Oh, that's a great idea. What What is the craziest munchies you've ever had? What is What is the biggest crave you've ever had and, and the most disgusting thing you might have <laughs> resorted to? Like, uh, there's just nothing left in the fridge. You came upon some weed, didn't expect it, and didn't do that shop ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure you had something uh, stocked and ready to go for that that munchie crave, what did you end up eating? Because that that is an interesting concept. Give us a call one eight three three CBD gang. That's one eight three three CBD gang. Uh, the numbers are two two three four two six four. I want to hear from you. And if you have ever eaten garbage, or I should say food <laughs> out of the garbage while having the munchies or any other crazy story, crazy earth story, or maybe a story that's not as crazy, just give us a call. Did you get so high that you ate your dad's 40-year-old Twinkie collection? <laughs> no, no, I did not do that. And that's probably because I don't eat Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the only reason. <laughs> did you at home get so high that you found your your parents' wedding cake topper in the freezer, Ooh. thawed that shit out and munched on it because you just had to have that cake. But if I had one of those spare, <laughs> just, ha- just around, oh, I would. I'd be like, sorry, Mom. That's going to just have to be for next anniversary. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm defrosting it. That, you're tough shit, man, and that thing is gone. 
Uh, did you eat an entire roll of uh, cookie dough? Oh yeah, just raw cookie dough. Oh yeah. Definitely, that's that's something a lot of people probably had. If you went to go make brownies and ate half the batter. Oh. <laughs> I bet that's something someone's done for sure. Or if you are deciding to eat your leftovers that are about a week old and you're not sure if they're still good. Give us a call. <laughs> right. Give us a call. What's the number, Tosh? 1-833-CBD-GANG. That's 1-833-CBD-GANG. CBD Gang, we're looking for your weed man van stories. The typical weed man in van has many faces. Space Cowboy. Roach. Filthy Frank. Many names. Scary Van Dan. Creepy Casper. Tired Tanner. And many different types of vans. But everybody has met him, and everybody has a story. What spliff lord turns you to the dank side? We want to hear about your first experience with the wacky weed, the ganja, Miss Mary Jane. You know, trees, trees, trees. Give the show a call at 1-833-CBD-GANG. Tell us your story in three minutes or less, and we might play it on the show. Hell, one day we might animate it for our YouTube page. Yowza, it's dank AF in here. Someone's smoking the good stuff in this studio. We'll spray some osium and be right back with more of the CBD Source podcast. The gang's all here. The CBD gang. Hey guys, when you're trying CBD, start low and remember to titrate up. You heard it from the CBD Source podcast. Does that work? No worries. Is that you got the audio good on that? Yes. Thank you for listening to the CBD Source podcast. This is how we CB do it.